Three, the stubborn girl. Not wanting to disclose the strange tattoo on him to others, Jacob immediately yanked his wrist away from the girl and covered his arm with his shirt sleeve. The girl stretched out her hand and placed it on Jacob's stomach as if she was trying to feel something. We are in public. Is it really necessary for you to be touching my stomach? Jacob felt helpless and smacked her hand off. Unfortunately for Jacob, the crowd had not completely vanished yet. Many were still waiting for more drama to unfold. A high school girl demanding something from a college man was something entirely unusual for the campus. Who would want to miss this scene? You two. Whatever your problem is, resolve it somewhere else. Since he was unable to fully break up the crowd, Sam was trying to find another way to help Jacob out. Listen now, Sam addressed the girl. You've found Jacob now. He's a good man. I'm sure whatever is going on between the two of you can be solved privately. What's your name, little girl? First off, do not call me little girl. And hmm, you call him a good person? I don't think he looks like a good person one bit. The girl was glaring at Jacob. You're not leaving until you give me back what is mine, she demanded from Jacob. Fine, fine, let's talk somewhere else. Jacob grabbed the girl by her wrist and rushed towards the college building. Since the excitement and interest had died down, no one tried to go after them. After a short while of jogging, Jacob let go of the girl's delicate wrist and said, Why did you have to cause such a big commotion? I really didn't take anything from you. Who are you trying to fool? How do you explain the patterns on your wrist then? She glared at Jacob. It looked like she wasn't going to give up. First, I did not take anything of yours. Second, I saved your life yesterday. Not only were you not grateful, you hit me. Third, you alarmed the whole college and caused an uproar to find me. Just how am I supposed to go here after this? Jacob argued. Just give that bead back to me and all of this will go away. She continued to stare at Jacob and there was a stubbornness in her voice. Her continually demanding something Jacob had no clue about was driving him insane. Hey, whatever. I'm going to go eat. Deserting the girl, Jacob turned around to go to the cafeteria inside the campus. However, the girl followed him closely and maintained her persistent expression. On entering the cafeteria... Jacob stood in line to buy food. And yet, the girl was stuck onto him like a nougat, following his every step. Even when Jacob took out his cafeteria card to order, her eyes were glued to him. I really don't know what to do with you. Swiping his card for the second time, Jacob sighed. One more order of meatloaf, please. As he carried his tray of food to the table, the girl also carried her tray and followed right behind him. As he sat down, she sat down right across from him. She was now copying his every move. She would take a bite of the food if he did, and when he stopped eating, so did she. Look, Jacob said in a pleading tone, I really, really did not take anything from you. He couldn't help but look at her helplessly. He certainly did not expect so much trouble when he went ahead to save a life. Your tattoo is saying otherwise. It is the clear proof for what you took. She insisted and refused to take her eyes off Jacob for even a second. And why is that? Jacob asked. Well, I can't reason with you. Anyway, I know for a fact that you have my bead. Which pocket did you put it in? It should be close to your stomach, right? Hm. You better not make me search you, she asserted. Search me, Jacob thought to himself. Why is this girl acting so stubborn and so brazen in front of a strange man? Jacob shot her a glance and carried on with his meal. It seemed that she had starved herself all morning waiting for Jacob because she devoured her meal at a super fast speed. Seizing the chance, Jacob raised his head and observed her quietly. He found that the white shirt she was wearing was not a common white shirt. Even though the shirt indicated the vigorous spirit of a high school girl overall, it was more of a retro style shirt. The lace knot on her chest was butterfly-like and adorned her petite body perfectly. Also, the bottom of her shirt was tucked into her jeans, displaying a nice contour of her slim waist. Along with her idyllic-style floral-patterned wooden sandals, Jacob was convinced that this girl must have come from a reputed family. Particularly, for someone who was at the age of a high school girl, her casual gesture of throwing out $500 so carelessly was definitely not common. At this moment, 
the girl abruptly lifted her head. She seemed to have noticed that Jacob was observing her. To conceal his interest and thoughts, Jacob quickly put his head down. Needless to say, the appearance of such an adorable girl in a university cafeteria had attracted attention from many of the university students. Eh, they must just think this is my little sister, Jacob reassured himself. You'd better leave as soon as you finish eating. Since you came all the way here by yourself, your parents must be worried, Jacob said to her. As long as you return to me what is mine, I will be able to go home with ease. I'm warning you, if my parents find out what I have lost and decide to come to you for it themselves, you will be in very serious trouble. With her eyes on Jacob, she suddenly spoke in a calm and mellow manner. Nonetheless, her words obviously hinted at the underlying threat. This time, her remarks caught Jacob's complete attention. He honestly had no clue what she was talking about. Kids at this age, whatever small matters they may run into, always like to involve their parents so they could just conveniently hide behind them. With that being said, if her parents do get involved, this would become a very sticky business for me. Thoughts were running wild in his head. Yet, Jacob still didn't think that he had taken anything that was hers. He came out with nothing on him yesterday. After the encounter with her, all he brought back to the dorm were two decks of cards. As for the bead that she kept on babbling about, Jacob was wearing pocketless pajamas and a pair of slippers at the time. How could he have possibly brought anything away with him? She must have dropped it somewhere else. As for the green pattern on his skin, they were a reaction of the discoloration from his bed sheet, according to the doctor. However, judging from her stubborn character, he was afraid that her family would also believe that he had taken something from her. If it reaches that point, there would be no way for him to explain himself anymore. As he thought long and hard, Jacob felt that he was developing a mild headache over the trouble he got himself into from trying to save someone. Stop following me. I said I didn't take anything from you, and that means I didn't take anything from you. Even if you get your parents to come with you, I would still say the same thing, Jacob declared as he stood up and grabbed his tray. After that, he returned the tray to the cafeteria counter and walked out of the door. When he turned his head around, he found that the girl was still following him. Jacob decided to stop paying attention to her and walked right into the library building while drawing out his student ID. Beep. The card was approved by the card reader and the door to the library opened. She wanted to follow him inside, but was denied access and the door began to close. Standing on the other side, Jacob gave her a small wave and walked into the lobby of the library without any hesitation. He was relieved that he finally got rid of her. You will come to me yourself, she said as the door closed on her and Jacob walked away. 